Welcome back to our series, Stories That Read Us, as we, as we dig into these amazing parables, these stories Jesus told to teach us so much. Albert Einstein is credited with saying this quote, the definition of insanity is doing the same things over and over again, but expecting different results. So, have you ever found yourself doing the same thing over and over again, but find that it doesn't seem to be doing any good, it doesn't seem to be working? When you do that, when, when, you're, when you find yourself doing the same thing over and over again, but it's not working, it's not doing any good, what do you do? You stop doing it, right? Otherwise, I guess you're insane, according to Einstein. So, let's say you're, you're trying to log into your account and you, you punch in your, your password, doesn't work, you punch it in again, doesn't work, punch... But you're not going to keep punching in the same password and expecting that, oh, now this time it'll work. I mean, maybe we do a few times, and maybe there's a little bit more insanity in each of us uh, than others. Uh, but eventually you're going to stop doing it if it's not working. Or if you're trying to solve a problem by using the same solution over and over again, eventually you're going to stop doing it if it's not working. Or if, if you know, you're watering the lawn, but the only thing growing is the weeds. Or you're telling that joke, you keep telling that joke that no one laughs at. Or you're going to the gym and it's not doing anything. Or you keep being nice to that person who keeps being mean to you. We, we tend, when we, when we keep doing the same thing over and over again, but see that it's not working, we tend to stop doing it. Or else we realize that we're, as Mr. Einstein said, insane. So what do you do then when it seems that your prayers aren't working? What do you do when your prayers don't seem to be doing any good, the ones, the same ones that you keep praying over and over again? Do we stop praying? I mean, if we don't, I guess we're considered by some as to be on the verge of insanity. Does it ever feel to you that, that God isn't listening to your prayers? I mean, in, in a number of ways this past year, just with all the stuff going on, the, the, the pandemic, the, the violence, the unrest, the, the continued challenges to, to reopen things, the continued challenges to just get back to some kind of normal. Or, we, and, and we've, just, we, we've, we've been saying this all year long, Jesus just needs to come. And if that's your prayer, just Jesus just needs to come, but it just seems like he's never coming. So these two things can happen. It, it, it sometimes might seem to us that, number one, our prayers just aren't doing any good. Our prayers aren't working. Or number two, God isn't listening to us. And when it seems to us like this, the temptation is, the temptation for us is to give up and to stop praying. So, Jesus told us a story. Jesus told a parable to, to teach us that we should always pray and not give up. And this time, we don't have to guess as to uh, what the reason was that he told this parable. Because he tells us. Here it is. Then, Jesus told his disciples a parable to show them that they should always pray and not give up. He said, in a certain town, there was a judge who neither feared God nor cared what people thought. And there was a widow in that town who kept coming to him with the plea, grant me justice against my adversary. For some time he refused. But finally he said to myself, even though I don't fear God or care what people think, Yet because this widow keeps bothering me, I will see that she gets justice so that she won't eventually come and attack me. And the Lord said, listen to what the unjust judge says. And will not God bring about justice for his chosen ones who cry out to him day and night? Will he keep putting them off? I tell you, he will see that they get justice and 
quickly. However, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on the earth? So this judge was a jerk. For being the kind of person who, for, for, for being a person who could arbitrarily affect someone's life by simply making a decision without any kind of due process of court of law or jury, or, but just to be able to make a decision and, and affect someone's life, he should have been someone who cared about justice and honor and doing what's right. But he was the opposite, the opposite of that. Why? Tells us. Why was he like that? Because he didn't have God in his life. His, the, he deal, the way he deals with people is the opposite of the way that God deals with people. Then you have this um, humble, um, helpless, dependent widow. The kind of person that, the kind of helpless person that people take advantage of. And her cause was just. She wanted justice as, as we do. And she was helpless to get it, as we often are. But she was persistent. <laughs> she kept coming. And, and, and as much as this awful, evil, unjust judge had already decided in his mind that he was going to torture her and make life difficult and not help her, as much as he wanted not to help her, she wore him down. The word there is actually, it's a, it's a boxing term. She, she wore him down. So she actually, she was figuratively jabbing. She just kept jabbing and jabbing and jabbing him until she blackened his eye. That's what he, he's worried about, his, the fact that his face was beat up is what that's saying. <laughs> she, she blackened his eye. Uh, she was pummeling him with persistence. And as much as he did not want to give her justice, as much as he did not want to help her, he finally gave her justice just so he wouldn't have to listen to her any longer. Persistence pays off. Persistence pays off like it does for the, the athlete that keeps practicing. Or the, um, the, the salesperson who, who got you to buy something that you have no use for because you just needed to get rid of them. Or, or, the, or the little old lady who just keeps writing letters to her governor. Like persistence pays off. Persistence makes a difference. But what's the point of this parable, the main point? Unlike the unjust judge, God cares. That's the point. Unlike that unjust judge, God cares. So if that, if that, unjust, if that unjust, awful judge um, finally acted on behalf of persistent pleading of this poor widow, how much more is God, who is just and good, going to act on behalf of his people who are persistently pleading to him? God is so much better, so much more loving, so much more good, wise than, than anyone on earth, let alone an evil, unjust judge. And so if this, if this unjust judge even gave justice, even for the wrong reason, Boy, we can, be, we can be certain that God will make sure to give justice to his people, his children that he loves, that he's chosen. He will see to it that we get the greatest justice. Life might look dark and difficult. If, if you read the context to this, in this chapter of Scripture, that Jesus was talking about how difficult and dark it would become, especially as we got closer to the end. So life might be dark and, and difficult, but you have hope. So keep praying. Always pray and not give up. Always pray and not give up. Even when you're tired, even when no answer seems to be coming, because unlike that judge, God cares. God cares. In our prayers, we might sometimes feel like that widow. Um, alone. Powerless. Neglected. Um, victim of, of unfairness. Ignored, the, the, the last person in line, the least person in line, 
Maybe, maybe sometimes you feel like that in your prayers. But the truth is the opposite. The truth is the opposite because we all have a direct line to our loving Father who is nothing like that unjust judge. We, we can come to Him anytime He wants us to. And, and when God seems slow to respond, we, we may suspect this lack of concern, um, but we can be sure of His mercy. Because if, if the widow gets justice from that heartless judge, how much more, how much quicker, um, how much better aren't, isn't God going to give justice to his people that he's chosen, to his people that he loves? That's the point of the parable. But then right at the end, it kind of leaves with this one. But when Jesus comes, will he find faith on this earth? See, this, this whole context here is that Jesus had been talking about his return. When, when Jesus returns, when Jesus comes back, he is going to right every wrong. He is going to restore this world to the way God intended it to be. A world without unjust judges and neglected widows. A world without poverty and, and death and, and suffering and rebellion. That's what's going to happen when Jesus comes. But until that time, many will be tempted to, to doubt God. To, to disbelieve God, to give up on God, and, and to see God as a merciless judge, an unjust judge, because he's not answering the way that we want. So when he comes, will he find faith? Will he find faith here? Will he find faith on earth? Because plenty has happened from then till now. Plenty has happened in our lives. Plenty has happened in this world, in our lives, that would maybe tempt us to, to doubt God, to disbelieve God, to give up on God. So Jesus told this story. He told this story to teach us to always pray and not give up. Because history, all of history is a test of faith. And the correct response to that test is persistent prayer, always praying and not giving up. So will Jesus find faith on this earth? Will Jesus find faith in your heart? Life on earth isn't fair. So God wants us to respond in persistent prayer. Life on earth isn't fair. So God wants us to respond in persistent prayer. Author Jerry Sitzer sees persistence through the eyes of a parent. Um, Quoting him, he says, he writes, My kids have asked me for many things over the years. A CD player, bicycle, boat, car, a house, exotic vacations. You name it, they've asked it. I ignore them most of the time. I am as hard-hearted as they come, a parent made of granite. My ears perk up, however, when they persist. Because persistence usually means they are serious about something. So persistence makes the ears of a loving parent perk up. But unlike any human parent, unlike any human parent, God, God instantly knows our true motive for praying. The moment we pray a prayer, God instantly knows what our motive is. He instantly knows what the prayer is and what our true motive for asking it is, whether that motive is, is pure or impure, whether, whether the motive is noble or or selfish. He knows. He already knows. So this leads us to the question, then why does God want us to be persistent in prayer? I mean, if, if, if we get tired, if we get tired of, of hearing our requests that we keep repeating to God, like if, if we get tired of, of, of hearing ourselves make the same request over and over, certainly God must get tired of hearing it. So, so then, then why does God tell us to, to keep coming, to keep asking, to keep pounding, to ask, seek, knock? Why, why does God want us to be persistent? He's God. So wouldn't, wouldn't one single request be enough for an almighty God? It's not like he um, is going to forget what we ask for if we only ask once or twice. It's not like he didn't hear it. He's almighty God. So wouldn't one request be enough? Why has that question Kind of has, has that occurred to you? Why does God want us to be persistent in prayer? Well, Jesus helps us out with this a lot. 
um, because we, we know it's a thing because Jesus actually, Jesus encouraged persistence in our prayer life more than any other quality. In, in all of Jesus' teaching about prayer, the, the one subject he brings up the most and pushes the most and emphasizes the most is that we be persistent, that we keep coming. You have, you have this parable, for starters. You have the parable we heard read earlier where the guy finally, um, finally gets up out of his bed in the middle of the night because his neighbor is being so persistent. You have the ask, seek, knock. You have all of that teaching. And then you have these teachable moments. Like when, when Lazarus died, Jesus' good friend Lazarus died. Jesus waited four days. Jesus waited. And so Lazarus' sisters, Mary and Martha, had to experience sorrow. They had to be shaped by frustration and, and grief before Jesus granted them their deepest wish in one of his greatest miracles. Or you have that Canaanite woman who kept pestering Jesus to heal her daughter. Jesus' disciples were telling him to, to send her away. Even, even Jesus was kind of brushing her off for a while. But she persisted. And so finally Jesus granted her her wish and then held her faith up as a model faith. Or at the well in Samaria, Jesus conversed with a, a woman about her, about her lifestyle and her beliefs. And then on the road to Jerusalem, he engaged with a rich young man about the dangers of wealth. But she persisted. She persisted and saw her life transformed. But he gave up. He gave up and, and then walked away sad. So why does God want us to be persistent in our prayers? Why does God want us to be persistent and keep praying to Him? Because He is interested in the process we go through. It's not just about the answer. It's about the process we go through. God cares about that process that we go through. So God views persistence as a sign of genuine desire for change. So it's a fruit of our faith that honors God. It's a fruit of our faith that thanks God. Think about it. When, when, um, when you really want something, when you really want something, you're going to persist, aren't you? You're going to persist and strive to get it. When I really want something, I'm going I'm to persist and I'm going to strive. Whether it's, um, whether it's making a, a ministry program happen here at church or uh, spending time with my family or, or getting some exercise time or uh, getting to the top of that mountain I'm climbing or finishing that project I'm doing or, or even making sure I can watch my favorite team play, right? I'm going to do whatever it takes. When you really want something, whatever it is, you're going to strive. You're going to do whatever it takes. Do we show that same spirit in our prayer life. Isn't that the spirit that God wants to see in our prayer life? If we show that spirit so many places in our regular life, in the rest of our life? When God doesn't answer prayers right away, there's always a reason for the delay. There's always a reason. We don't always know what it is, but there is always a reason for the delay. One reason might be this. One reason might be that God is removing selfishness from our prayer. Right? We might first, as we first begin a certain request to God as we're approaching God in a prayer, there might be selfish reasons off the bat. There might be the wrong motives, the wrong sort of me-centered motives, selfish motives than the right motives. So maybe even the request is right, but there's selfish motives for it. And maybe God's going to need me to persist with it a while so he can remove that selfishness from the prayer. Another reason might be... Um, that God wants to grow that longing in us. He, he might delay on that request so that our longing becomes greater, so that we want that thing even more, because maybe it's not great enough yet, and maybe he needs to build that in us. Another reason might be um, that, that he knows that his, um, that his children treasure gifts more when they have to wait for them. Oh, that's the next one. Sorry, yeah, this one, the one that's up there. Quick and easy answers don't strengthen faith. 
All right, God knows that if, if every answer we get is quick and easy, that's not going to strengthen my faith. I, I start to think that I'm almost in control of things and not relying on him to be in control of things. And so God knows that quick and easy answers don't strengthen faith, but sometimes waiting for something does. The next one is, is that um, God knows that his children um, treasure things more when they have to wait for them. So he wants your joy to be even greater than you want your joy to be, believe it or not. And, and he knows that we're going to treasure things even more when we have to wait for them. And finally, it might not just be the right time. Because God will always do the right thing at the right time. Whenever there's a delay in answering our prayers, there's a reason for the delay. There's a good reason for that delay. This, this persistence that God wants us to have in prayer, it isn't for him. It isn't to make him feel like more important or something like that. The, the, the fact that God wants us to be persistent in our prayer life isn't for him. It's for us. It's for us so we don't get spoiled. I mean, come on, we are people who have Amazon Prime. I order something today, I want it tomorrow. We have zero patience. And God wants us to be persistent in prayer for us. It grows us. It strengthens us. It's so we don't get spoiled. God knows that so many better things, so many better things come with waiting. Persistent prayer, what it does is it keeps bringing God and me together. As I pour out my soul to God in persistent prayer, I am, I'm unloading my burden on the one who can actually handle it better. And as I get to know God better, I learn that he has nothing in common at all with that unjust judge. Even when it seems at times like he does. The more I spend time with him in that persistent prayer, the, the more I learn, the more I understand what God wants me to do in life. And so persistent prayer not so much changes God. Persistent prayer changes me. Persistent prayer changes me. Because it helps me see life. It helps me see the world. It helps me see my life through God's eyes. And I start realizing that, that God has a clearer picture of what I need than I do. When, 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 I try, when I persistently petition somebody, a person, right? When, when, I'm, when I keep at it and keep asking a person for something, when I persistently petition a, a person for something, um, it's usually, I'm, I, what I'm usually trying to do is persuade them to adopt my point of view, right? We do this. We all do this. So when, when we keep after a person, we're, we're trying to persuade them to adopt our point of view. So I want that salesman to match my price, Right? I want, uh, I want my colleague to, to do things my way, see things my way. Or um, I want, uh, I want uh, you know, I, I just want, to, I want my neighbor to uh, vote for my candidate, whatever. We, we try to change people's minds to see things our way. So that's natural for us. So sometimes in the early stages of prayer, when we, when we begin approaching God, we're trying to do the same thing. We approach God the same way. We try to get God to see things our way, and we persist with it, and we keep at it because we're trying to get God to see things our way. We're trying to get God to adopt our point of view. So that's where God is going to have us persist, right? And persistent prayer, the more I do that, the more I persist in that prayer, uh, I'm going to find out that, that God is the greater, wiser, more senior partner in prayer. God is the greater... Uh, more senior partner in this relationship. And as I persist in prayer, I'm going to find it's not, it's not me getting God to see things my way, but what actually is happening in persistent prayer is that he is getting me to see things his way. Isn't that ironic? We think we persist because we're going to, if we can just ask him enough times, we'll finally get him to see what we're looking at. But actually, the more times we ask him, it's he that is getting us to see things his way. I, I love this quote from George MacDonald. Um, he says that a God that should fail to hear, receive, attend to one single prayer, the feeblest or worst, I cannot believe in. So he's saying, like, if, if you have a God that, that never answers any prayer, well, I, I won't believe in that God. But a God that would grant every request of every man or every company of men would be an evil God that is no God but a demon. So he's saying, 
if, you, if, if your God is going to answer every prayer you say, that, that's, that's not a God anymore. It's just, that's a, like a vending machine who's doing what you tell him to do. That's not a God. And so God has to be God by giving us better answers and knowing better what we need. And so here, here we go. Here's, here's the next point. Persistent prayer. Persistent prayer is not so that we can get what we want, but so that we can become who God wants. Persistent prayer, the reason Jesus encourages us and God encourages us to pray persistently, persistent prayer is not so that we get what we want. It's so we become who God wants us to be. I'm goal-oriented. I need lists that I can cross off. I, my family's laughing right now. I'm go, okay, I need to accomplish things that I can cross off my list. And if I did something that wasn't on my list, I'll write it on my list so that I can cross it off. I'm very goal-oriented, all right? So prayer with God who knows way more than I do stops me in my tracks. And I, in persistent prayer, I learn that, that I can't fix that person I'm praying for. I learn that I, I can't get everything I want in the time frame I want. And so... I have to slow down and wait. I have to slow down and wait. I have to, I have to offer my prayers to God in a manner that almost seems like surrender, humble trust. I have to give those things up to Him. And as I trust in Him, He can finally begin growing in me the qualities and fruit that I needed all along. Peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. So we pray persistently, and then we wait patiently to receive the results. And what God gives us will always be best like, like Peter, we may pray for food and get a lesson in racism. Like Paul, we may pray for humility, or we may pray for healing and get a lesson in humility. We may pray for relief from trials, but instead receive the patience to endure them. We may pray for an end of this pandemic, but instead be given the strength to redeem our time in it. Asking, seeking, knocking most certainly has an effect on our just Heavenly Father. But it also, it also has a lasting effect on the asker, seeker, and knocker. It has an effect on us. We know, we know that God will answer us. Because one terrible day, He did not answer Jesus. Jesus called out, my God. And that prayer went unanswered. Jesus' prayers were given the, the rejection that we deserve so that our prayers could receive the reception that Jesus deserved. We know that God is going to answer us when we cry out, My God. Because he did not answer Jesus when he called out, my God, from the cross. The unjust judge in the story, the unjust judge didn't want to give justice. But he did. But he did just to avoid a tiny bit of what he considered to be injustice. The just judge wanted to give us justice. And he did. By going through the greatest injustice for us. So friends, always pray and not give up. Friends, be, be persistent in all of your prayers. But especially, especially in the prayers that Jesus was most specifically talking about here in this context. Your prayers for his return. You see, the Bible ends on that prayer. The whole Bible ends on that prayer when it says, Amen, come, Lord Jesus. You see, 
let's not go through life not thinking about, not having in mind Jesus' return. He is here. He is already here. He, he is the God of, of the new. He is the God of all things. But he is coming again. He is the God of new creation. He is coming again. He is returning and he is going to make all things new. So let's, let's long to see that day. Let, let's let him find faith in our hearts. I mean, I'm going to say it again. We've been saying it for months. Jesus just needs to come because that is when we will see true justice. So always pray and not give up. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. That's our prayer. Let's pray. Lord, Lord, just fill with your Holy Spirit, fill all of our hearts with your word and your promises so that we know and are assured of your presence and that so we will petition you constantly, especially being being minded, being, being waiting for, urgently wanting your return. Help us long for that day. And as we long for that day, shape and create us into the people you want us to be, to do exactly what you, you, you call us to do in, in all the, the ups and downs and everything you allow us to go through in life. And as we go through all of it, lead us to keep coming back to you all the time, always waiting for you and always putting our hope in you without any questions because you've shown us mercy. You've kept every promise. So just let that be our strength today in Jesus' name. Amen.